See, when we talk about you know having women in leadership, leadership positions, yes, there's a reason for that mm -hmm. because you need to have somebody who speaks for who speaks for others, uh, yeah, speaks right? For that gender. Because yes, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. You, if you're lucky and you have a man that is speaking for you, and it happens. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm just saying that if there were more women in leadership, there would be more women in managerial yes, positions. Yes. Start. How did you even bear the idea even way back in school? Well, an yes. agency, you're a leader of tomorrow. tomorrow but yes. then I'll look at those people, they told us that when we were in there. We were 10, 10 20, 20, 30, 30 40, and, and they're still, they're still there. there. So, so, yes, I had a lot of energy and I wanted to do things a certain way, and I was rude here and I was doing that. Eventually, I was fired. Were you able to use any of your knowledge in promoting your business? It's so complicated because I'm such a multifaceted person. I mean, we started in England. Good hair started in England. Oh, okay. Eventually, Mochi had to open something in Nigeria. All oh, hair yeah. is processed. processed. You cannot take hair from a donor and put it into your head. Once you're a public figure, you become a target. You look at all the companies we started. We have board members from Nigeria, but also from around the world, because we want to build world-class companies that outlive us. Welcome to Amma Scout, an entrepreneurship and career talk show where we help young entrepreneurs and professionals reach their full potential. My name is Amma Odike, your darling host, and I'll be bringing you amazing guests who have seen it all to educate and inspire you with their stories. A Triumph Global Executive MBA graduate, she transitioned to entrepreneurship founding Gaia Africa in 2018 a pioneer women business club in Lagos and fostering connections among top female executives. She actively participates in boards and is an angel investor contributing to African entrepreneurship. Certified in wines and spirit, she is passionate about arts, culture and philanthropy, embodying leadership and empowerment. She is none other than Olatoun, Candidate Johnson. Let's welcome her to Omos Couch. I'm so happy to have you here, TCJ. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm going to call you TCJ because that's the name that's I know. All the other ones are formality for people. <laughs> so I'm so happy you're here. Our big president, you know, we call you a president <laughs> of Gaia Africa. Yeah. You're welcome. What we have here is the master, the game. I mean, we have a big sis and we have. Yeah. Someone who has been there, been there, done that, and been it through it all, both from, both from the career part as well as the entrepreneurship journey. She's going to be here to share her journey with regards to those areas and give us the words of wisdom so that we can all learn. I'm going to actually hear also to learn so much from her. I'm very excited. I can't wait to hear all the bundle of <laughs> knowledge and intelligence that she's going to share with us and she's also a beautiful lawyer. Oh, Am I correct? Yes. yes I am I'm a correct. lawyer. I mean, I'm not biased. It looks like I have a lot of lawyers who come on almost count. Oh, really? Somehow, for some reason, you know, they are very, very intelligent people. So, yeah. so TCJ, please tell us how did you start your career journey? I know it's about 30 years now. More. Oh, 30 plus years now. Yeah. So I know the millennials, the Gen Zs, and yeah. all in between will My be like... My career is older yes, than... <laughs> than, than <laughs> exactly. Older yeah. than a lot of people yes. who are actually in business Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Or starting their careers. Let's hear from you because one thing I've known even in my own life is everybody has their story, everybody has a journey, everybody mm -hmm. has words of impact, everybody yeah, has sure. something to share and mm -hmm. of course somebody like you it's even even much bigger. So please let us hear about your career journey before we even move on to your entrepreneurship journey. Okay, well thank you very much. Um, so I, I, I think I always knew that I would be a lawyer right okay. because i come from a family of lawyers mm. i watched i'm a real film buff right so i okay. watch a lot of films. series films oh, everything I love films too. and i watched once um a long time ago a what they used to call bestseller right it was called it was rage of angels okay right? and the main character was this corporate lawyer this lawyer who mm. was a woman and she was a actually actually she had her own practice after a while but mm -hmm. yeah and I just decided that, you know, that's what I want. I want to be 
like just because Jennifer. of the <laughs> just because of the movie. Well, no, I was going to be yeah, a lawyer, but, but I, did he fund but I, it? Okay. Yes. yes, and so because I, I think I start, yeah, I started with litigation. Okay. Did not like it. I'm me too. Did not like it. I, Did not I, like I it. checked out in one month. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> corporate law. Corporate was yes, better for yes, me. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, she was that that was that was even more encouraging. And so I did that and um so I, I started uh, directly out of law school. The first firm I went to, I remember my boss would like send us on errands and he sent me to he sent me once to, to court to do something. Mm. Here and in I, Nigeria or yes, in the UK? Here in Nigeria. Okay. And I came back with an ex some story and he said, that's just a story, I'm not interested. Mm. Go back and do not come back to me Without until results. it's sorted. Yes. Boom. So from then on, I learned that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no, there's there's no, no halfway. Yes. There's no halfway. Yes. So you have to just do get it. in there, do what do you it. have to yeah. do. And yeah. Um, and then I left that firm and I went to another firm, which was more, the first firm was more sort of I don't know, I did all kinds of things from criminal tribunals to, he, he used to push us into criminal tribunals because okay. he said that that was a good way to Which cut our get teeth. Which will get your teeth, yeah, it's got your teeth. Don't know yeah. about that, but anyway, <laughs> that was, and then I wanted to move into more sort of corporate type practice, so I did. So I, I did that for a few years. And then after a while, I just thought, you know what, I'm not even, I, law firms, maybe not for me, I'm gonna go in-house, right? And so I went into uh, shipping and logistics Okay. And from chip, shipping and logistics, Which of them? Al Rain. It was called Al Rain then, Rain. but it's okay. now called the Bolloré Group. Okay. It's a French group. And they've been here forever. I mean, like, forever. I've seen, I've seen, their, yes, I've yeah. seen their name yeah. on, on, on trucks yeah. Yeah. Or, or containers, more like. Right. Yeah. So there was Al Rain after the Bolloré, after Al Rain. Yes. I was um, more or less headhunted into Total Upstream. Total Upstream then was a an exploration subsidiary because they were still at exploration stage yeah. and found the oil and they hadn't become a um, producer. Um, so it was a small it was a small company with I think maximum about 30 people mm. and so I started there. Were you a corporate lawyer there? At yeah, so I was doing law company. and administration as well. Okay. Um, actually, I was doing a lot of things. I know. Many, yeah, so in a small company. Yeah, you, you, you wear many hats. Our, yeah, yeah. Our roles. So I did, I did a lot there. And then in 2000, um, the two groups, so Total, in you know the headquarters, merged with Elf Aquitaine, mm -hmm. also in France. And um, so it became Total. It, well, actually, it, it, it went from Total Fina Elf to Total. Total, yeah. yes. And then I just basically stayed there for years. I think I was yeah. there for about 20 years. Wow. <laughs> Honestly, I did not think they, I would... We don't have those, those I, kind of people anymore. No. They are not built that the way. The truth is that even uh -huh. I... But that's shocked. loyalty. Well, not really. And because no, Not really. I've loved the place. Though. I think with... So it really does feel like you're in diff a different company, right? Because when you're... You know, you're doing something in one area, then you move to another area. I actually moved to another country. So, okay, you know, yeah. imagine okay, that yeah, there's some there was people. Dynamic. Yeah, yeah, some people are in the in careers and they live in four different countries. countries within yeah, the through that there. exactly. So that would so be very exciting. It doesn't really feel like you're, you're in the doing same, the same thing. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I did that, and then I, I realized I, I knew right off the bat that I was not going to like stay there until I retired. I just didn't want to. I don't know, I think I... Well, you had spent 20 years already. Yeah, I had. But I think I also felt that I wanted to... You know, I needed to be able to do stuff, to do have something some, for myself. A, a yeah. new expression of yourself. Well, and also I needed to have the energy <laughs> to do this. <laughs> you know, because by the time you stay there until retirement age, maybe you don't have the energy to do anything, do anything else, anymore. right? So, so who was that pivotal moment within that organization that you said, I have to go now. Are you sure it's time to go? So in 2014, I was kind of like reading stuff. I remember where I was, I was in Abuja. I was living in Abuja at the time. Mm -hmm. I was reading something. And I came across this article about a lady who had been in you know, corporate mm -hmm. for like 17 years. And then she'd um, gone off to do this Triumph EMBA. And oh. after that, she, you know, like set, she'd set up founded this uh, luxury business. And I thought, ooh, that sounds interesting. That could oh. be me. <laughs> oh. So um, I then decided that I would try to do an MBA, but I just thought, oh, but I'm a lawyer. I can't do all those 
figures Maths. and all those yes, things. Yes. But I thought, you know what? You Let don't me know. Do it. Yeah, you just you have to try. And yeah. with try, and what you had to do was you first had to send your CV. Then they yes, tell you whether I you should apply. The or process not. is really regular. Yeah, it's yeah. not just applying for an no, ordinary MB no. because I think you have the New York, Paris, and I think one other country yeah, so, all um, involved in the so entire process. Tr yes, Triam is LSE yeah. in, in the UK. Yes. It's um, NYU Stern mm -hmm. in the, in the US, and it's um, something like in the pa in Paris. In, in Paris, yes. yes. So, um, so yeah, so they said, you know, come, they came back and said, yeah, you know, you have a good CV. And I thought, well, okay, Seriously? fine, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> and then, you know, then you go to the application process and then you have to write all these essays. And wow. if you have less than 15 years experience, I think you have to do the GMAT, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, after I've done, I did all of that, it was the interviews and then next thing. For, an, for a new job? No, no, interviews for the for the EMBA. Oh, oh, you do about oh. two interviews. Oh, before you even before, go in before again. Before they tell you that <laughs> yes, okay, then you're you're in. Wow. So um, it's all very exciting and very nerve wracking. It was the most difficult two years of my life because I was working yeah, at the same I time, can and I had a very large portfolio, and so it wasn't easy at all. Yeah. It wasn't How easy were you able to cope? Because you know we have a lot of viewers here who have this kind of high profile job mm -hmm. and um, they find it very hard to navigate between the job, the studies, even the family and so yeah. many other commitments that they have. Yeah. So it would be good to actually share because some people may be in that triangle yeah. right yeah, now. Absolutely. How are you able to balance all that? So I've been an empty nester for a while, so it ah, wasn't so okay. that the so domestic fund was pass. easy, okay. right? Well, easy, yeah. Easier. But then I was also, uh, what do we used to call it, um, geographically single, because oh. I was living in Abuja and working in Abuja, and, and my husband was in Lagos. Wow! Right? So um, it was a little easier. I would kind of like finish work around, I don't know, eight, nine. Then I would go to my flat, and then I would have like a half an hour break, and then I poop. Oh, get it and start studying again wow. yeah um, but so that's a sacrifice on his own it is and i think you have to be absolutely determined mm -hmm. to do whatever it is that you, yeah, you want to, to get do to because goal, otherwise yeah. i mean and yeah i just couldn't i did not want to be i, I didn't want to drop out yeah because i'm like, like i've come this yeah. far I've even got going to do through the rigorous process of being absolutely. selected absolutely. is enough to absolutely. keep you going absolutely yeah. but it was an extremely rigorous um, two years, but it was also an extremely eye-opening mm. two years because, um, you know, I mean, I was in a bubble. You know, know, you're in a bubble when yes. you're, I mean, like I was in an IOC, yeah. his 99 subsidiaries all over the world. You're talking to somebody in G Algeria today, then somebody somewhere, to, you know, it was. Yeah. So I thought that was all life I, was all you about. You kind of think yeah. that is what life uh, is, yeah. because, you know, it, it was more or less the UN, right? <laughs> and then you then start to, you know, study case studies or read case studies and then you realize oh so things are happening here yeah. things I are mean, happening things there. are happening and not just things but like amazing, amazing things. things and i'm thinking these people have one head you have one head so you can, <laughs> you you know, can do it you should be able to think think something up but yeah that was really um, eye opening for me hmm. And a huge so, learning. I know that curve. must have been. I mean, I'm sure it's it would be incredible. I don't think I can actually study that in my lifetime. So I can put it out there because I actually had to research what the term oh, EMBA really? was oh. all about, and I was like, "What yeah. the heck is all this?" Yeah. Six this different was, countries. Yes, <laughs> like it's so much. I have just yeah. too much on it's my plate, lot. but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to acquire if you have it, it is. and it's, it's something of pride. And it's also a say. lifelong experience okay. because you live with all your your classmates, okay, your classmates right? Have been and they your... are they live I mean like I think I have classmates in at least I don't know 30 countries or something, right? Mm. And then there's the broader Triumph yes, alumni. Group that so you, you belong to it's yeah. huge. It's huge. Interesting. Yeah. I mean hearing your story, I mean when people in those, I would say in those days, mm -hmm. I would refer to in those days because things were kind of, I would like to say easier in a way. Compared it, to, yes, compared yeah. to the complexity of things right now. Right now. Yes, impossible. right now. I don't know so how people just can to merge say, so many things together. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Just to say that today, I wouldn't have been able to do a trial yes. in the MBA. First no. of all, because of the financing. Oh, because, yeah. you know, 
It's it would very, just yes, it's extremely expensive. Too. It is expensive. It's actually one of the most expensive MBA, uh, EMBAs that you have out there. It, it is expensive, yeah. and so you know, today, nah, mm, it would not. It would not even be it's something I would have. <laughs> I would have been able to, to consider. consider. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to go into something interesting because career here in where you have been and career right now is still the same thing. It's still yeah. you still have to navigate from your entry level totally. or even mid level to the leadership yeah. level. And I, obviously, 20 years you obviously did not start from being the head of no. of uh, a department yeah. or the co or corporate um, law mm. or something. You must have started from somewhere. So can you? T t the viewers or tell the viewers what are those things that you did intentionally to ensure that I mean you're doing well mm. you're moving from one stage to the other something that at least kept you going because you must have had a plan or maybe you actually devised a process or maybe you did something extra for you to have been able to attain the, the level at which you had done before mm. you before you retired early <laughs> <laughs> so you know I think Sometimes it helps when you are a, um, an advisor, right? So lawyers are advisors, yeah, right? Yeah. And I was working as a lawyer. So mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer and I'm working as, as a lawyer, which is very different to somebody who perhaps is a lawyer but is working in commercial, mm, right? Yes. So I think in a way it, it's a slightly easier path, okay. right? Because it's why you know. <laughs> yeah, That's why you train and because to do. people look to you for advice, mm -hmm. and so it's it's just easier to, to progress, I think, a little bit. Um, so you didn't do anything extra. Nothing deliberate. I mean, so well, I, you're I on went, top of your game. Right? So d don't forget that I came with experience mm. first of all okay. to to Total, and yeah, um, and then when we merged, you know, it was a question of you know, um, yeah, they had to place me in a certain at a certain level and all that kind of stuff, and so. I started off um, in the merge group as senior legal counsel okay. and I only did that for a year because um, the person who was legal manager moved to work in another country mm. and um, I was the most senior. Mm. So I moved into that role and then from there, you know, there was it was a time when um, legal departments were not really that well regarded, right? They just wanted you to kind of like you know, dot the I's and cross the T's, right? Mm. And I thought, well, this is very boring. We can't be doing that. <laughs> and, and anyway, how, Why so when you have problems, you come back, but yeah. then I will not, we won't know what, what it, you, you have know, what signed steps were or taken. things you have exactly. done on behalf of the company. Exactly. So um. I went to my boss, who is the MD, and I said, look, we can't, this, we can't this, is, like this, this can't go on. Um, we need to be there from the start, including all the technical areas, because areas, we don't yeah. understand technical, that. Technical, commercial and legal. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to understand the whole value chain, chain right? Yes. To be able to advise when there is a problem. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, absolutely, write up a memo. So I wrote a memo, mm -hmm. and the memo went company-wide, and like n nobody, basically the memo said nobody could do anything that touched on concerning anything legal without legal being involved. Being involved. Oh my God. That see, you beautiful. get what you ask for. You ask for, for exactly. So that's <laughs> so, some of the intentionality yeah. well, okay. that people will see yeah. and notice yeah, okay. that somebody did something. That's because true. Some other people may say, ah, let me just do the one I'm doing. As long as they are paying me, let me I do the barest know. minimum. No. Because, so, yeah. because I always think actually to the future. It's more and proactive than reactive. So with me, I mean, and, and I'm sure with other lawyers, mm. you know, you, pr you prepare a document today. It's not for me and it's not for you tomorrow, it's mm -hmm. for the people who come well, 20 come years later. Because you, yeah. you know we have these long-term agreements, right? And so uh, you have to make sure that everything is in place and can be defended and you know you have solid, um, you know, you have solid, solid contracts, yeah. etc. If you're enjoying this episode already, I want you to take a moment to please like this video, subscribe to our channel and leave your aha moments in the comment section below. We would love to engage with you. Okay, let's get back to the show. <laughs> So yeah, and I just bulletproof contracts. Bulletproof, actually. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, so that's I yeah, suppose. So when you were working at uh, Total, did you at any point in time experience any gender bias in any way or form in terms of growth, in terms of your productivity, in terms of anything? Or everything was really, I mean, no, was running very smoothly? No, I wouldn't say it was running very smoothly. I would say that um, there was a dominance of men 
Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I think that no matter what, no matter which way you slice it, mm -hmm. um, there were more men in roles where women could have been in roles, right? Yeah. And yeah, and because, see, when we talk about, you know, having women in leadership, Leadership positions, yes. There's a reason for that mm -hmm. because you need to have somebody who speaks for who speaks for others, well, yeah, right? For that gender. Because yes, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. You, if you're lucky and you have a man that is speaking for you, and it happens. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm just saying that if there were more women in leadership, there would be more women in managerial yes, positions, right? They'd be yeah. more represented, and so even if. I say that I didn't necessarily feel it, right? Um, although I think I think there was a time when, yes, there was a contest between myself and somebody and a man. Yeah. And you know, the role went to the man, and I just wow. thought, you know what? At this point, I, you know, been there, done that, save Are it all. Serious? I'm just gonna like just go. Wow. I mean, I was gonna go anyway, but um, it was just, yeah. That that was a bias, yes. in my opinion. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So the gender bias has, I mean, I think it was even far worse then than now because women are now more conscious. Yeah. Women now know their place. Women are now no. talk speaking. And companies yeah. have, have to do yes, certain to, things. To meet, and of course, companies have to meet up to the SDG rules. So, and it's now like a, it's entrenched in the policy. So people, even when they don't want to, they have to do it. But I don't think it's still enough. It's not enough. It's still not enough because I think a lot of it is a lot of lip service. There's a lot of and ticking the box. Yes, There's exactly. A lot of lip service. Lip service. Yeah. And some of them just do it to fulfill all righteousness. Yeah. And sometimes they make it look as safe to women. They make it look as if it's they're doing us a favor instead of you earning it. It's like we're just giving it to you. So I think if what, you don't, yeah. even if you don't, you're, you're not qualified for it. Well, I think sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, it, it could seem that way. Yes, it could seem that yes. way, but it's not necessarily so, right? Yeah. Because, so if, for example, you know, out of a whole bunch of people, they choose a lady, a woman to do something, mm. then, you know, the tongues begin to wag, wag that, oh, yes. well, I suppose because she's a woman, but actually not necessarily so, okay? So sometimes. Probably, yes. Yeah, sometimes, she probably earned it. I think a lot of the time, these days, you know, there's just, just so many amazing women to yeah, choose from. A lot Honest, of honestly, women, amazing, I just, yeah. very knowledgeable. Absolutely. It's incredible, yeah. in fact. So I'm happy they have their voice now compared to 20 years ago. Oh, gosh. Oh, 20 years. Women didn't have any voice. Yeah, yeah. I think you could. Well, think back to even yeah, like even 10. 50 years ago. Oh, no, that's. I mean, that's we worse. weren't even. We're talking about yeah, women in yeah. any. No, you're any right. Even 10 years ago. Yeah, even 10 years yeah, ago was still an true. issue. Yeah. I think true. the advent of. It's still an issue today, huh? It's still an issue, still an issue today, today, unfortunately. Yes, it's still an issue today. Mm -hmm. But one beautiful thing is that the women, are, they keep talking. Mm -hmm. We keep talking. Mm -hmm. We keep bringing ourselves forward. Yeah. And because now it's not a matter of just being quiet and expected to be heard. Yeah. Or expected, expect people to know. Mm. You just have to, you know. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, if you're not invited to the table, table. then make your own table, yeah. right? It's all those things. No, yeah, it's true. Yeah, because, yeah. and that's the fact. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, women are less afraid yes, to do the things afraid, that they, yes. they have to do. Yeah. And I think that brings me to one very beautiful part now. And what was the pivotal moment within your career that you felt it's time for me to go to set up the Gaia Africa? Or was that even the trajectory of the entire story? So tell <laughs> I us wish the, it was. <laughs> tell us the real story no, behind okay. so, the move. So I left. Okay. Um, the, your job. I left yeah. my job. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I decided that I wanted to do something in services, right? I want so I've always wanted to, to run a, a members club, right? Oh, you always wanted yeah, to, yeah, because I always wanted to do something in hospitality. Okay. Um, Did you have a flair for it? Did no, you I'm like just it? I'm just such a fuss pot about service, so uh, I'm kind of like you go to places and I'm like yeah, I've got all this conflict. Uh, <laughs> so I challenge myself. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, so if you think that you're so cool, do, do your it own. yourself. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, so yeah. Um, so, the, but the first club was, it was meant to actually be a, an arts club, right? And the idea was to have um, a members only club that was focused on the arts, which Just is like the work. whole, no, no, the whole gamut okay. of that. Oh, so, whole, okay. art, you know, arts, so visual arts. arts um, theatre art too? Mm, Not really. No, no, more like music, okay. um, design, fashion, fashion all okay. these, you know, like those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. 
So the idea was to have to curate um, events around all those, those things, things and then to, yeah. you know, for the members. So um, you know, and also to focus a little bit on on emerging artists, right? Mm. Um, so because for the members it would be uh, you know something mm. fresh, and for the, of course for the artists it's an opportunity to be seen by a new audience. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah. So you had this idea. So I had this great idea. Mm -hmm. I even went. I mean, I, I went pretty far with it because you know I developed the idea. I found the property. We we did all the design for the property, mm. and then we had a major. And then I was also trying to raise some money. And then we had this major meeting, and uh, with you know everybody who was went to the architect, uh, um, the people who were going to do the what was it, MEP. So um, that's the electrical, okay, mechanical, okay. plumbing for level. the for the for this club itself. Yes, yes. yes. So we basically, um, you know, had everyone in the room, and we started talking about the building, the, the buildings that yes. I, I wanted. It was like eight townhouses and one outhouse, right? This is in the middle of Ikui. and they told me that, well, look, bad news. Wow. Why? Because this these buildings were sort of like so. The street was off a main road, which was yes. fairly new okay. and high, and they were sort of down there. So they said ah, it would be susceptible to, to flooding. flooding yeah. And unfortunately, they were not built with very high walls in the first place. It's quite an old building, actually. It's been there for a while. And um, so basically, so the choice of the building was totally off. What do we Yeah. Yeah. So. To well, cut a long story short, they said if you, you could, you'd have to pull down the buildings and start again. Oh, you had already pooped off no, no, the structure. No, 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 no. So oh, no, it was already a structure. So what okay. we wanted to do was yes. just like Renovate drill through. Yes, yeah. completely remodel Change it. it yes. Um, but yeah, it wasn't going to work. So they said pull down the buildings and rebuild. I said, huh? <laughs> well, so, you could have chosen something else. So I realized that I didn't have a. This was no project because okay. once you see your numbers. <laughs> going to the north <laughs> and, and yeah so I just realized okay this isn't there's no project here I'm not I'm you gonna know. stop mm -hmm. I, you know I had to make a conscious decision to say you know okay there's no project right which can be difficult sometimes yes, yes. but I was just like no way this is not happening and but then what was curious was that I, as you I still said had I, that burning spirit to do something still I and, did yeah but what I found curious was that while I was trying to raise money for this particular um, club, I didn't come across many women. I didn't come across any women, actually. For the guy in one? the investment, for the first one. Okay, for the first yeah. one. Okay. I didn't come across any women, and I thought that's curious. Where are the women? Because of course I know that they're women who could who very have, yeah. easily invest. invest and, yeah. yeah. And so that's really when I started thinking about doing something you know with that women in terms women of women in a way to put them to together put women together yes mm -hmm. because i also found um that when i left my job um because i'd not i'd been missing <laughs> for so many years oh yeah i traveled a lot for my job wow um so a know, lot outside the country network, yeah. within nigeria so i You're really lost really i lost touch with, with everybody people yes i mean like a, yeah, I lost touch and it was very difficult to, to, to keep in touch with people because, you know, work was just always, I, would, I was carrying my work everywhere, mm. even on holiday. <laughs> you seem to have been a serious worker holiday, I was which a is bit, beautiful, um, for at, its, at a time, at the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I, I then realized that I didn't really have a network. Anymore. And you know, I would. This was now 2017, mm -hmm. right? And people would be asking me if I was still in Paris, which I left. I left Paris. Like, I was yes. back in the country in 2011, like by the end of 2011. Wow! So I thought, oops, That's there's like a problem. Yeah. yeah. So and people just hadn't seen me because I've just been because I, I went. Around. I went from Paris to Abuja, from Abuja, then later to Lagos. Anyway, but then working, working, working. And so <clears throat> that's when, you know, the idea came to, you know, I was just like, okay, I've got to do something different. But I merged some of the things that I was going to do with the first one into, into, into this Gaia, new one, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I thought it was absolutely essential that, you know, women are seen yeah. by each other. So what does Gaia Africa represent for you? Um, it represents... Uh, let me see, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, I guess determination. That's what it represents. T 
to me. Directly, right? yes. Um, to me directly, the determination, because really, for a very long time, um, I really had my doubts as to whether it would work. This would that I would even it get started. it up and running. Okay. You know, um, because there was this whole major thing with this clubhouse, right? Which is, you know, like one yes, of the differentiations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, then you know. So did you see a gap at that period? Did you see a gap in the, I mean, in oh, Nigeria, absolutely. in Lagos, yeah. that there was a need for it? Yes, because uh, first of all, I, you know, this was 2017, 2018. I mean, yeah. First of all, I felt that it was time for women to be able to have a space that was theirs. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I thought that it was really essential for women to be able to connect on the lines of business because mm -hmm. you know as i always say we connect yeah. on every, every other, other level thing above, yeah and it's annoying yeah and so you know it's got <laughs> oh with... how's your hair <laughs> yeah how's exactly your clothes? Yes. how's yeah. your oh jewelry yeah we need something of substance we need yeah, yeah exactly and so this was the reason and i just thought you know what and and so part of that also is the fact that you know we have this honor code which is mutual trust or um, yes. it uh integrity and authenticity yes. um, because it's really just you know at, at, at this point in our lives it's kind of like because we're focused on decision makers you know at this point in your life it's really what is it that you have achieved what is it that you can bring what is it that the club can give to you and oh, you know what, you what impact do you yeah. want to make yeah so that's that's what that is um, yeah so you this was your solely your idea from the beginning at the beginning mm -hmm. and you shared with some other people who became part of the your dream so um, unfortunately I looked for a, a co-founder for many years I'm still looking join us on almost couch where inspiration meets action if you are a remarkable entrepreneur or a career giant with a unique story to share we want to hear from you Become our guest on Omar Scout and empower others with your journey, experiences, and valuable insights. Use the link provided in the description below to apply for yourself or nominate someone who deserves to be on this show. Let's inspire together. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so but you're still the one I, running. Yeah. It's, I mean, like, look, I have a team, which is, yes, you know, know, I'm thankful for. But I'm a Gaia member, so I know. You are. <laughs> and I'm, so, yeah. I'm not just a member, I'm a Gaia yeah, ambassador. ambassador. Yeah. Take note. <laughs> exactly. So that's so wonderful. So, yeah. Wonderful story. And, you know, Gaia Africa for me has been extremely amazing. And I think when I shared that with you, with, with the kind of background I came from, which is almost mm -hmm. pretty much like you, mm -hmm. not that I, I didn't spend 20 years in this job, <laughs> that's a difference. Yeah. I spent just you were five, six years, <laughs> five, six years, yeah. uh, but doing real like legal work, mm -hmm. nothing else, not corporate law, and, but solicitor's work. Mm -hmm. and, but I got really tired quite quickly mm -hmm. because I was, I think it was actually well, just for uh, balancing the children. I thought mm. actually having a business was going to be easier, but that was the biggest, I think that Mistake. was the biggest lie yeah. in the book. It really is. It was a lie that's been there for a long time, but mm. one beautiful thing is that in this generation, even some years back, people now know that that is the biggest lie. Oof. It's the worst thing you can do for yourself. Working with somebody is far easier. Working on your do own, you know it's so difficult. It is extremely difficult, but I think that, um, you know, people have this romantic idea yes. about, you know, being called a founder yeah. or whatever it is. Yes. It is very it's hard difficult. work. And that gets me to your next question. How has running Gaia Africa been in every way? What are your challenges? Gosh. Because your, the viewers who are here want to learn. Mm -hmm. We've learned about your career, mm -hmm. we've heard all the yep. things you've said, but now you're in a different ball game, you're in a I different am. part, mm -hmm. and now we need to know what are the challenges and how have you been able to resolve some of them? Uh, I'm glad you said some, some of them. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think the, hu the biggest challenge is always trying to raise the capital that you mm. need, right? Um, because Especially if, you know, it's, it's not a business that is tech, right? Yeah, we're tech enabled, yeah. but we're not a tech business. Yeah. And so when investors are looking at um, businesses, they're really looking to see how is it going to scale. Yes. Right? Yes. Because they, they, they don't like brick and mortar too much. No. Yeah, they want no. something that is very, yeah. uh, very techy. Because yeah, you can online. reach yeah. millions of people, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, so, yeah. So, so, so. Capital has always been a, a big problem, challenge. and I think 
my focus, and I would, you know, this is my mea culpa, mm -hmm. my focus was, you know, you, we've got to get this remodeling done, we've got to get this clubhouse done, it's got to be up and running, da da da. Mm -hmm. um, and so all the funding that I received was, you know, went into that, and you find that, but yeah, because you think that, well, look, you're going to be making money as you start. start yeah, you yes. do. You but do, you see, but you forget, that, especially that with brick and mortar, yes. comes with a lot, lot of, of expenditure, yes. a lot of expenditure, yeah. daily, So you already weekly, have debt before monthly. you even start. So it's a lot of, so you're, you're having to, um, you're having to maintain the space, you're having to, um, you know, you're having to service all kinds of yeah. different things. So there's a lot of expenditure um, and your revenue is really struggling to catch up to with your expenditure. Up, yes. yeah. Yeah. So that, that I think is the primary challenge. challenge. I think the other challenge is that when people hear about Gaia, they're automatically directed to the clubhouse, right? But yeah. the most powerful thing about Gaia is the community. Yes, it's the it people, is. right? The network. It's the network. That is what is the most powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, so we actually want to expand digitally so that, um, oh, you know, yes. yeah, because we have to kind of like de emphasize. The clubhouse because yeah if you're a digital to, member to you're in abuja yeah. or in nairobi and mm -hmm. you visit yeah, lagos okay, yeah, hey yeah, yeah. you know you use the clubhouse. yeah exactly 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 <laughs> yes. exactly so um yeah uh, i think that would be a great idea actually to actually emphasize uh, or channel a lot of energy mm -hmm. getting members from absolutely other oh African no for sure countries. that's the that's it's definitely the plan. a good a good a good route. it's got to be yes. and also because i i believe very strongly in this sort of interconnectivity between you know within the continent yes. and i think that is something that we that women can at least yes. promote exactly. okay and i think it's something that we need to do um, and you also you have to also speak to your brand Mm -hmm. The name is Gaia, Gaia Africa. Africa, it's Absolutely. not Gaia Nigeria. No, it's not. So it's, it's about not. time you actually started the African No, we animal. started, we started, we <laughs> yes, started. I know. Um, we have connections in a few other countries. You're going to just go heavier on it now. We can't, mm. well, if when we expand digitally first, mm. then you can Use sort of pick up members them. in yes. those areas yeah. and then you can see, you know, which is the most viable and mm. then you can do it. Um, the okay. other thing I think um, we have a problem with, and I don't think it's um, necessarily um, my type of business, but I think being of. in the hospitality business, mm. um, the issue of talent is a real problem. Yeah, so I was also, ask what yes, the other challenges yes, are. Yes, talent yeah. is a real problem. And I think the fact that we, we're not doing something that has been done necessarily before. done before, people maybe don't understand it. So there's, there's quite a long learning um, curve, right? Mm. And but then at the same time, I'm just finding that a lot of younger people are just not as serious, focused, or dedicated to work yeah. as that's, people that's, of my generation yeah, are. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, because you know we were just we were we, we would were, just work. Yeah, I make sure we keep working. Schooled <laughs> into the idea yeah, that, and you know, if you take a job with somebody, you're loyal to mm -hmm. that, that job, person, yeah. to that. I think so. A very company. reasonable timeline. Yeah, yeah. So no, but time why time. you are being paid, be loyal. Yes. Nobody, it's not, it's not slavery, right? Yes. So well, no one's going to force you to stay. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, don't stay and then, you know, because like you uh, you're halfway about, there, halfway in. Everybody has some sort of side gig, and I'm like, you know what? Not on my time, right? Mm. Because that's not fair. That's yeah. a conflict of interest, right? So. Um, yeah, so that's another major problem, I so think. So manpower is uh, an issue. Funding is number one. Funding, manpower, the manpower. and then the I economy. think manpower is really one of the greatest manpower to a largest huge. because somehow you may get money eventually. But how do you fix the manpower issue? Yeah, exactly. Because I think what I've heard a lot from you concerning mm -hmm. the, the quality of the employee, which yeah. is, I think, the critical part. Absolutely. The quality and the attitude. Yeah. They really are Absolutely. such a major problem here Absolutely. in Nigeria. Yeah. I don't know what outside the country. I think not yeah. as much because not as much and you service know, is not our it's not in our culture and no, our DNA. Not. Correct. And I think that's yeah. something that we we as employers of labor and companies are employers of labor are mm -hmm. trying so hard to force mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. the But choice. we have to because yeah. if we're gonna be competitive with yes, the world, exactly. which we have to we be, have to then we have to we understand have to. it. But people are kinda of like <laughs> Why do we have it, to do yeah, that? Do exactly. To, uh, you know? It's it's crazy. Yeah. It's now having to find those needle in the haystack now. That they're just ones yes. one or two who yes. have those yes. good skills. Fortuitously, um, you know, we have 
a nice team and you know some very very steady hands, hands which is yeah. which, which is, is a good, good thing yeah. Yeah. yeah fantastic fantastic i think uh, i'm enjoying the story so much and and I, I need to move to the next question so i would be asking since you've been running Gaia, I mean, you've talked about the challenges now. What would you say would be success for, to you? What's success to you? What does success look like look to like me? Look like to you. It doesn't even have to be Gaia. It can yeah. be any other thing. Um, I'm beginning to see what that looks like, but I want to see that in scale, <laughs> right? Mm. And success is when members actually connect and they actually do stuff together, mm. right? Or they are sponsoring each other for board seats or they're sponsoring each other for business or they're doing deals together, yeah. right? That is the essence, yeah. right? Um, the other thing is obviously is, you know, when we have a lot more members um, because that Who share again, the same value. Oh, no, for Not sure. Not just members, no, so, yeah. no, for yeah. sure. So the thing is, with Gaia, it is selective. And so this is why we have this sort of fairly long process um, mm -hmm. for members to, to come on board. Because um, we're looking for particular types of people. And um, yeah, authenticity is one yeah. of the most important. Part of it. Part of it, yeah. Interesting. OK, um, my last question would be, what would you tell any entrepreneur who wants to go into the hospitality business or any other business <laughs> based on your experience? What are the three, four things, three things that they need to look out for? That if you had hindsight, you may okay. have maybe prepared better or done something differently to okay. prevent any of those issues that may, you may have faced. Okay. Well, before I look, before hindsight, the yeah. first thing anyone has to do when they're going into business is to have razor focus. Razor, Razor focus. focus. Yeah, okay. Because you're going to hear advice from all Everybody, kinds of corners yeah. and you have to be focused, mm. right? So that's the first thing I'll say. What if I look back to what should I have done better? What could I have done better? I would have had a lot more money, a lot more runway, right? Okay. Um, to start? So you yeah, mean. yeah. I should have raised should a have, lot more money. Don't they say start small, grow big? So, you know, thing. for me, it's go big or go home, okay. especially in this kind of thing. You okay, can't this kind of really business. start the kind of business that I started small. Small, yeah. Yeah, That's it, it just truth. doesn't yeah, work. It's a club. Um, and so it really was, you know, go big or go home. And yeah, that was it. But yeah, so raise that money. And then also, I, you know, I think I would say, do your best to find a co-founder. <laughs> Because yeah, so that you can honestly, you can balance the weight. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's very tough when it's you're doing it alone. I still have that, even if with the structures and people I have at a high level. Yeah, sure, I still but it's, have it's still that the issue. ultimate, yeah. ultimate, right? The ball is it's you. It's, the buck yeah, stops at your desk. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. So that that would have been nice to be able to to share that sort of also the responsibility of. The various things that you, you have want to, to cope be your co-founder. You, you want to join? <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, I'm still seriously. trying to manage the one I'm no, managing. No, honestly, it, it really is. It's really so. What What surprised me was actually was that I couldn't find anyone who sort of had what the were same. What were you looking for? Well, I was looking for somebody who actually could share that the same vision, okay. right? And who was interested in in like doing what I wanted to do. Okay. I actually couldn't find anyone. I don't know why. It would be nice to know why. But I'm I sure couldn't. you will find. You know, one day. It's just time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yes. Um, yeah. I think. I think the, the last the, one. Um, the last one is um, don't give up. Yes. Don't Do not give up. up. You cannot give up. You have to be determined, mm -hmm. dogged. And resilient. Completely resilient. Yes. Um, I think you have shown I'm that speaking to myself, even, by the way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, being, yeah. knowing you as long as I've known you, that's one of the things I've noticed. I think that's number one. Yeah. Focus and resilience. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It is. And I think you also have a lot of passion. If not, you would have... You I do because I can have because I have a now. very long term view for this thing mm -hmm. and I have you know it's almost like sitting here and like seeing what the oh, future, future holds, holds right and so I see it very clearly mm -hmm. it's just now for other people to see it very clearly mm -hmm. so that's the issue but if we had more time I would have gone into your wines and <gasps> spirit because I know you love wine I so do, much you are actually do. even a pro or something well, you are certified wine I've, I've, well yes. I did WSCT too which is <laughs> <laughs> Which is something, it's an achievement. Um, yes. I haven't done like a diploma or anything, but yeah, but oh, I wow. really enjoy it. Interesting. Yeah. 
And you know I'm the direct opposite of that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what makes you fall asleep? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you fall asleep? Well done, well done. Thank you so much, DCJ, Thank for you. being on Amos Couch. I'm sure we would invite you sometime in the future again, and I hope you would actually respond to us and come Always. on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and I'm sure our viewers have heard it all, and I'm sure they've been able to so. listen. She's a bundle of resilience, passion, being focused, and hard working, extremely hard working. So that's all we can share today, and thank you very much for listening. So, thank this you. Today, we are going to the fun segment. It's very, very oh, there's short. There's a fun segment. Yes, the fun Ooh, segment. Nice. It's just a trivia question. Okay. And I'm going to ask you. Okay, it's a simple question in a way. <laughs> What's the world's longest river? The world's longest river. Yes. Blimey. Um, <laughs> the world's longest ri river. Wh which country is it in? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Why is it? I don't gosh. Know. I, you know what? May I, let me just tell you that I did not like geography. The only thing I remember about geography is the name of the clouds. Okay. You would know that one. So every time we had to like do a drive with my husband. Yes. And he's, you know, at the wheel and I'm meant to be reading the map. Yes. Ah, well. It's a problem. We will find ourselves so in, somewhere else. Yeah, totally. Anyway, the answer is... Amazon River. Oh, really? The longest river in the world. Where is it called? To an extent, the from where to where? River. I don't even know where. The <laughs> longest river in the world. In the world, yes. Okay. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You. Thanks for watching Almost Couch. I'm sure you're eager for another inspiring story. So click here to watch another episode or click here to subscribe. I will see you in the next video.